Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's December 11th meeting. I ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. I will entertain a motion to approve, I will ratify the payroll warrant for 3815. I'll uh, make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing yeah. none, all in favor? Aye. 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 I will entertain a motion to approve the select minutes for October 9th, 2015. I'll make that motion. I'll yeah. make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, no. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Announcements the Brookfield Food Pantry. Thank you very much. Brookfield Food Pantry is in need of your generosity this time of year to aid others less fortunate to help your neighbors this holiday season in the form of cash or donations, please contact either Ms. Woodward at 508-867-3891 or Ms. Walker at 508-867-2281. The food pantry at St. Parish, St. Mary's Parish is open from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Wednesday and Saturday. Um, also like to announce that through the uh, hard work and dedication of our uh, leadership down on Beacon Hill, the Brookfield Police Barracks, State Police Barracks, will not be closing. <coughs> so I commend That's everyone great. involved. Like Any it. other announcements? Well, just on that point, I did send a note of thank you to Ann and, and to Marissa and Berthium. Oh. But in the case of the legislation that was filed, that that, that that legislation continues so that we have the facts so that the next time this comes around, at least we have the, the background if, necessary. Yes, if they choose to follow yeah. that legislation. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, the, the legislation that was filed requested a lot of uh, studies. Um, obviously, it would be up to them to yeah. do that. And sure. That was piece of But it of would that. be good information. And it made it out of the committee yeah. and uh, got yeah. the governor's attention and the colonel's as well. And the colonel met on Wednesday, and it will not be closed. I also, I also wrote um, to each of them to commend them for a job well done. You know, they're serving our district, the two of them, very, very good news. I think they're doing an excellent job at it. Steve, is this is this an extension or from what from what the colonel no, said? No, it's not. It's not closing at all. Oh. It's not closing at all. That's good. But it is life, and anything can happen at any time. So. Oh yes, but the paper it said you know like like February or something, but this is beyond that. Now. Yeah, beyond it's that. beyond that. And there was a lot of uh, outreach that reached their ears. So. Very nice. It is very nice. Uh, anybody wish to address the board this morning? Welcome, sir. Good morning. Uh, yeah. Just want to give you a quick update on um, uh, things around the lake. We uh, brought the trash barrels. The Lake Association decided to fund trash barrels uh, at both North and South Pond. They were delivered this week. Uh, we will monitor them to be sure that we don't get a building of trash. Uh, if anybody sees it, just let us know. I believe this will be picked up uh, once a week. Can you let everybody know how to get a hold of you? If they need uh, yeah, feel free to uh, reach out to qqla.org or you can give me a call at 508-637-1458. And uh, if you see something going on down at the beach, uh, give us a shout. Uh, you know, we'll work with uh, her and be sure that, because uh, that's always been a concern that uh, the trash barrels would attract, you know, large amounts of trash. And so we will, Keep our eye on it and we'll watch it and be sure that doesn't happen. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that the uh, payment for the quarter parties for the uh, supplemental uh, coverage for the winter season has been submitted and uh, so that should be taken care of as well. Excellent. Thank you. Sir. Anybody else wish to address the board this morning? Hearing none, item number one. I will contain a motion at 9.03 to enter into the tax classification hearing. I will make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Pierce, welcome, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, each year we come to this uh, time and we uh, discuss the uh, comings and goings of the cash and cash equivalents in the town of Brookfield. Um, and uh, in the past, sometimes we've uh, uh, inundated you with uh, 
paperwork with numbers up one side and down the other and along the corners and the edges and all there, which uh, flummoxes just about everybody looks at it. So uh, the real point of contention at this point in time is that um, we have a, a tax rate um, which is temporary until we sign the papers and submit it to the uh, uh, DOR. Um, the tax rate is based on a single rate for the town. Towns of our size, historically, all go by a single rate. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there are some towns of a larger size that have had a double rate, like Sturbridge, and want to get out of it mm -hmm. and get back to a single rate, because a single rate is more equitable especially for Brookfield, which has little to no industry and, uh, and, uh, and a small commercial base. 92% uh, of uh, our uh, uh, income from this town comes from the residences. Now, the only uh, uh, thing that you can do for the residential doesn't apply to us because we are so heavily uh, residential. Right. And so anything you do for a residential exemption would put more burden on the rest of the residential uh, people. So, so Mr. Snyder, you, you are familiar with what we're doing here? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just, yeah. When I first started, I thought we could play with the tax rate, yeah. but the only way to play with it, like uh, Mr. Pierce is stating, yeah. is to decide if we want to charge the businesses extra yeah. Yeah. No, or set a single that. tax rate. But we can't set the tax rate. That's done by what we owe. So this discussion here, what Mr. Pierce is presenting and he's recommending, I'm assuming, a so single rate. A, a single, single rate. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yes. Um, the, um, oh, yeah. Get that out of there. You want my No, I got it. <laughs> um, the uh, excess capacity is calculated right now at uh, $119,099. Um, that's a number that varies from year to year. I, I didn't hear you, Phil, but could, could you repeat that? The excess levy capacity is uh, uh, calculated at uh, $119,099.06. That varies, like I say, from year to year. Uh, what this says is the impact on the tax rate is minimal. Uh, $19.50 is the tax rate, and last year's was 1915. That's a 45-cent increase, and that is about as minimal as we can get because there are increases in um, insurance, um, and things we don't have control over. And those increases we have to build into yeah. our uh, budget. So uh, if, if we go beyond that and uh, with um, more capital uh, increases, uh, more things to buy, uh, then that tax rate will rise and, and the amount of money in excess levy capacity will disappear. For me, it, I, I'm pleased that the tax rate is down to 1950 at a 45-cent increase, and uh, that's the, a minimum impact, impact on the uh, uh, taxpayers in the town of Brookfield. Um, and that's with the police station on it, too. Oh, yeah. Good. That, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, what we'd like to see is the uh, selectmen vote to accept the. Uh, I will entertain a motion to accept the um, recommended single tax rate for the town of Brookfield for next fiscal year. I will make that motion. Second. Any other figures I've given you are all temporary because we haven't finished putting it into the uh, system. Mm -hmm. um, I recommend that, uh, that, you, that you sign this today while you're here. Yeah, we have yep. to log into the gate. Bottom, and we have then to log into the gate. We have to log into the gate. Because we're on a tight schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, 
better get that done. I'm going to finish the tax recap. Then we have to call in our uh, representative and the wire come in and roll. Yes, passwords are in here. It'll all be done today before we leave. So doesn't um, because before, before you sign it, we haven't taken a vote. Oh, no. that's good. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, because don't the tax bills have to be out before the end of the year? Yeah. 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 We're we're about we're a little bit ahead of last year in terms of uh, making this stuff move, and uh, the uh, tax recaps for the state. I'm moving very nicely uh, down to DOR because they've made some improvements in how to process it and they're still working on that. Mm -hmm. Our problem is that we're a small town. Mm -hmm. We don't have all the uh, bells and whistles that all the larger towns have, and we're reliant on our consultant. And he does well. Thank you. Was he instrumental in helping you set the tax rate, or what, did the board? Oh, he yeah. Yeah, thank you, sir. Right. Can I ask a couple yeah, more questions? Many as quick as you do. How are we doing? Have the um, ad gone out yet for the assistance? Well, with this is the tax classification. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, so we'll bring it up after. So I'm going to entertain oh, okay. a motion we'll to uh, adjourn the tax classification hearing at 912. I will make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now you can ask. <laughs> Has the, has the position for the assistant assessor been advertised? Um, uh, Marlene put it in. Uh, it's going in the paper on the 27th, I think. So yeah, uh, it's, it'll be in for two weeks and uh, she was looking at Craigslist, but it cost $25 to go on a Craigslist, mm -hmm. so we backed off. We said, well, let's wait and see what happens from here. So and the so possibility is we'll put it in the citizen. And then another thing you could do, you could probably ask, like, um, the tax collector to put it out on her wavelength. Do you have a system like that with the assessors, too, with the association that you could put it out? It's possible. Because they have an email system. You should probably ask the the, we uh, have an email system too from Mr. I, no, no, I understand that too, but she has like the, all the tax collectors. You know, she couldn't, Mike Siri could also do it on the town clerk's website and get it out. Well, we'll get the word out to you. Uh, this, this is going in the telegram. It's so it's going weeks. on the 27th. Uh, that would be a Sunday. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the 27th of November. Is that right? No. Could, could have been. No, that can't be right. No. No. Nope. Marlene was handling it, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Well, I'll speak and, to Marlene uh, about it. You can talk to her. Okay, I'll talk to her. As far as I remember, uh, one of the two weeks ends on uh, Christmas week. So, uh, okay. so by then, maybe we'll have an idea of what's happening. Yeah. How many returns we've got. Okay. We might, have, yeah. might have to go out again as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank All right, you, so sir. thank you. All right. Item number two, joint meeting with the water commissioners. Do you want a representative of the whole commission to come on up? Or? You really can't be the representative? You want to go up? Who else? Yeah. So rumor has it you had a meeting. I guess it was a split decision on who was going to be the next replacement. I correct that our last regularly scheduled uh, commissioner's meeting, which was Wednesday, uh, we asked both of the candidates to come in, and they came in and we, uh, we had a discussion uh, with them. And we, we voted on the two applicants, and it was a split decision. Um, I know one individual. I don't know why he walked out. Um, mm -hmm. Does Mr. Dolan, is Mr. Dolan present? Yeah. Yes, he is. Would you like to come up and speak in regards to your desire for the position? Mm -hmm. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Hi, Jim Dolan. I lived in town about 20 years. Uh, I heard the position was available. And Town's always 
seek people to step into this position. So I volunteered. To, I put my name in. And I had a uh, agricultural position. I have a small farm on the side of the town. Main Street. That's about all I can say. Well, thank you for your okay, desire. Thank you. Mr. Eaton, would you like to uh, present your case of why you like to become? Yeah, I didn't know we were going to do this, but I'm sorry. Okay. Thought it was only fair. Uh, I, I'd like to be on. I think that we're going through a very critical stage. I think we've got very qualified commissioners now, a qualified superintendent. Uh, Bruce has expressed an interest in retiring mm -hmm. a year from now. I consider Bruce uh, an outstanding employee in this town and a tremendous asset. Oh, yeah. uh, I think it's going to be a challenge for us to replicate that uh, person. Uh, I look at my experience, I've been in the town for 24 years. I think I've probably attended 90% of the town meetings. I'm active in the town. Uh, some of the things I'm working on now are kind of winding down. I'm looking for something else to do. Uh, I've had experience uh, hiring people both in the private sector and the public sector. Uh, and in nonprofits, and uh, I will rely on the current commissioners to handle some of the day-to-day -day, uh, questions that I'm not familiar with in the water department. But certainly, I think I can add value in this process of uh, hiring a, a replacement for Bruce, and during that time, also learn a little bit about how the water commissioners work. Any questions? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you. So this board's discussion. They're split, that's so. That. And I know I know both gentlemen well. I do too. And both guys are great guys. And it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard decision. It the only thing that uh, permit does offer is the hiring and the concern yeah. that we have with Bruce's retirement. Oh, yeah, because Bruce is. He's, he's invaluable, I think, to the town. And, you know, I don't know if we'll get somebody that'll come along or just as good as Bruce that will pitch in, you know, like when help is needed with other departments. And that's the thing. So, so it is a difficult choice. It is. But a choice we have to make nonetheless. Yeah. So any comments, questions? No, just that we yeah. have to make a difficult yeah, we decision. we just have to make a decision. Do you want to throw out any ideas or? No. Yeah. Through, through this process, and um, I know Mr. Dolan a little bit just by his activity in town and watching him on video on this side of the table on 194, um, I agree 100%, totally different, uh, tough decision. It is. Um, through this process right here, I think Mr. Eaton gave more of a compelling yeah. argument to want to be. Mm -hmm. So if it's based on this, I, I would recommend Mr. Yeah. Eaton. Yeah. Are we in agreement? Yeah, I'm in agreement. I'll make that motion. We have a second. So we'll Mr. Eaton until the end of what, June 30th, 2000? No, no, it would be, uh, he has to run in the election. And he has May. To, yeah, until May, and then well, to, com picks, to complete the term. To complete the term. We we'll have, have to a motion. Yeah. Do we have a second? Oh, I'll second yeah. that motion. Well, we oh, we, we have a second. Yeah. second. All right. Only discussion I'd like to say is, I absolutely love the fact that you hear that the town needs help and yes. you step forward. And I commend you for that. I think. Yes, I do. Bottom too. of my heart. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three. Trying to sign on my clothes. I'm sure you can blend it out. Yep, he can get past that. Why is this in here? Oh, that's for. Oh, it's on number eight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, item number three appointments. That was the appointment. Um, <coughs> why we have this on the agenda. Um, two, was it Tuesday night? Monday night. Tuesday night? Monday night. This week has just gotten away from me. I apologize. Uh, Mr. Holmes had resigned from the ZBA. 
he had uh, rendered his resignation in that meeting. So I am going to uh, entertain a motion to accept with regret and to send out a letter of appreciation to Mr. Holmes' resignation from the ZBA. He's been valuable on yeah. it. Sure. Yeah. I will uh, make that. Uh, I'll make that motion. Second. Regretfully. And if we can have Karen send out the appreciation to Mr. Holmes. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 With that, um, you had appointed me as the alternate. I request that uh, I became a become a full time member to that board to fill that move over from alternate to full time. So entertain a motion for that appointment. I will make the motion that uh, Mr. Comtois be appointed to the police building committee. No, no, no. ZBA. Oh, the, oh, the ZBA. Oh, I'm sorry. To the to the ZBA. Sure. Second. Any discussion? There are none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number four, department head meeting. Welcome department heads. Unfortunately, two of our department heads had to leave for a call. Uh, so I'm glad we got a hold of Peter. The um, town hall has been uh, fitted with the natural, with the, is it natural gas? It's natural gas. Yeah. Um, the fire station is almost done, but the propane generator has to be switched over to natural gas, and that's gonna be taken care of Monday. So I'd like to report that for that, for those individuals. Um, any other department heads have any? Uh, bridge dedication. Mm -hmm. I've been in contact with Mr. Bertram, and uh, he's ready to uh, set the motions forward with the state we need a date. What I, what I heard is that the state was waiting until spring? No, okay. absolutely incorrect. So mm -hmm. The state is waiting for, for us ah. okay. to give them a date. Linda has attended one before at Barry's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I re yeah, I attended one in Barry last year for a dedication of a bridge, and it was done on the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend, and I think that would be a nice time to do it, and I'm sure that, you know, all the Murray family would be around that time, and more people would be able to attend it than doing, you know, during the week. And that would give us a good time, you know, to get ready to plan the ceremony. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, I agree. Do you want a motion from this board, or...? Yes, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, a lot yeah. of So I will, I will entertain a motion to allow the Board of Selectmen to reach out to Representative Berthium or whatever entity mm -hmm. that needs to be um, reached out to to request a dedication for the Saturday before Memorial Day. Great. And yeah. if we could reach out to the Governor's office as well and send representation from either Governor Baker or Lieutenant Governor Polino. Yeah. She probably will be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a whole protocol involved. Yeah. Yeah, because that sat the, that Saturday, yeah, it would be the Saturday right before Memorial on that weekend. Well, with it, with with the organization, they had stated that they're going to make the sign. I'm yeah. surprised they're reaching out to Donnie because yeah. Ann was uh, talking uh, about the sign. Yeah. No, I, I, that's why I've been reaching out. He told me to wait for you. That's what okay. Said. Um, but Ann had made comment that they're waiting on us to see if okay. the state wants. Well, I think we told them we wanted the state to install the sign. Yes. Uh, so if we can coordinate all that with all the entities. And then they said, like, guess what they'll do is, you know, they'll install it and then they'll cover it until the dedication. Okay. So I'll entertain said motion. I'll make that motion. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that takes care of item number five. We're still in uh, the prime ahead now. Okay. Oh, I didn't even notice it was on there. Okay. Uh, Bill Pond. Mm-hmm. Clarence, we attended a meeting with Yes. Is that, have we developed any uh, protocol? Well, she was going to offer us some pictures, and I'm wondering if Cindy received anything back. Because she was going to give us a, a way of how that area would look with the reduction in, in you, the surface area. Did you get some pictures? Not from her. Oh, we no. did. Oh, I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, we did, but she was, she was going forward more and she this. Yes. Uh, Beth Lambert is a representative from Aquatic Rehabilitation. State. Uh, Mass Wildlife. Mass Wildlife, right. Yeah. But it's a, her, she falls under the rehabbing uh, ponds. She showed us, she sent some photos over to us that uh, what was a pond then turned into a, a, a stumpy ground, now turned into a green marsh. And uh, just, what you can do with bodies of water. 
that uh, that were man-made and now want to uh, now are brought back to a native stream. It's just she just suggesting alternatives to Mill Pond. Has anyone? Well, I'm going to direct it toward Clarence because you would ask to Clarence. Has anyone reached out to a butters? Well, this is the way you do that yeah. because instead of just coming back and saying, "Hey, we're going to shrink the pond by so much," and this is that's what we're going to do. This way, it was actually there are best practices in the area of doing what we're talking about doing, and with only really dealing with about a foot of surface area. I mean, that's really what we're talking right. about. You know, what would that change look like so that we could go to the abutters to say this is what it would look like? And so we did see a couple of pictures, and what, what I saw were terrific. Right. I mean, for, and for what we're doing, it wouldn't even go that far. So it's a matter of getting whatever the additional pictures were, and in fact, organizing a correspondence with the abutters so that they would see that you know this is a practical route uh, with really little or no impact on the abutters. In fact, maybe some benefit to the butters. I, I, I think we're going to have to hire a firm, probably an engineering firm, to evaluate the depth of the pond, the slope of the pond, so that if we were to lower the water table some, what, uh, what events would then occur after that. We're looking, to, we're looking to shrink the acreage of the pond from 21 acres, Cindy? Yeah, to 15. Down to 15. Uh, in shallow waters, that happens rapidly. But then the, the dam safety is going to have to have those numbers, and they're going to have to be hard numbers before they're going to accept it. And none of that will be determined through your study? No, no. this is just to go to the abutters to say this is where the direction we would like to head to have them on board, and I think that that's probably the process, is to say this is the direction that we wish and to head. We've, we've yeah. had this through three boards now, yeah. and none of them have balked. We, you know, obviously, money is an issue, and to reduce it. Well, so Steve, I don't think money is money an issue because well, we have Well, money's the always loan. an issue, so don't lose sight of that. We have the loan for some of the pond dam. The 170? 177, already in place. Um, we haven't spent anywhere near that amount on the work that the bank stabilization work that was done on Trout Brook. But part of this plan, lowering, takes away the necessity of inspections for the dam, Correct. Which, exactly. which, is, which is a financial <coughs> issue. Which is what's going on. A financial issue. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but we have the 180 in place, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, my goal will be minus, the 180 is to use it to remedy the situation. Yeah, minus whatever we spend yes, on that's the correct. phase one. Yes. Yeah. But we're going to have to hire an engineering firm to, to show, to provide this data. So we can present it to the state. And I think that's something that we should move on. Until we have that data, we really, you know, it's Well, maybe, maybe it's a public hearing of the, of the... Well, that's uh, why I bring the butters in. Yeah. So let's, yeah. I think... Get the public hearing get the public done. Well, let's get the information yeah. first to the abutters. Exactly. Through the public hearing. So but let's get... You can... Are we, are we getting the cat before the horse? Because we don't know what the ramifications are going to be until the engineer tells us what they're going to be. Well, if I have four or five abutters that come yeah. up and say absolutely not, I, I don't think I would press forward with it. Absolutely not what, though, Steve? I don't to want pursue. to reduce. I, we, don't, we don't know until the engineer yeah. tells us whether we can even do it. I would argue you can do anything you want through the proper channels, but I think the abutters are... Yeah. We're currently working with Leonard Engineering. Mm -hmm. to complete the reports on the bank stabilization. Would it be prudent to ask Leonard for an estimate of cost for them to do this study? You haven't done that already? No. I'm not opposed to that. No, I'm we, don't, we don't have the authorization. We don't have the authorization. With, with the Board of Selectmen's you know, approval, so I'll entertain, I think... I'll entertain a motion to allow the Highway Department to reach out to Leonard Engineering for an estimate for said reduction. Analysis of said reduction. How about the combination? Because Bruce is involved with it too. Well, it's just, it's just, I know, it's a formality. I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah. Yeah, best could. Well, we have, a, do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Yeah, and then I'll second it and we discuss. Yeah, discussion. Beth? Uh, I may not want to limit it to an RD. I would just say to uh, authorize them to get estimates so long as the estimates don't incur any particular cost. Because while Lenardi is already on the program, it might, there might be an opportunity with somebody who specializes in that kind of water work. Because Lenardi is probably not got an internal asset to do that. 
and they're going to wind up subcontracting it anyway, so you're going to get their 18 to 20 percent markup. I, for finding I think I think Lennard does it themselves. Yeah. I think through research with that, it was either Fuss and O'Neill or Lennard, wasn't it? Those are the two we've dealt with previously. Yeah. And those are the only ones that did. If if you come up with anybody else that you think. Just through the history of this, Fuss and O'Neill, we don't want to work with Fuss and O'Neill, correct? Correct. No. 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 So I think we're now to, to do the best. Yeah. We can definitely look Quiet. into another, yeah, inquire. Yeah. We're, not, we're not blind to saving money. Okay. Any, any further discussion? Oh. So, yeah, just get, getting back to process then, just we'll use the motion to discuss it. Yeah. Is yeah. That, that I had, my, my, my idea was that we're going to, Notify the abutters, do public hearing, go off, and, and what this does is this brings us back to getting a bit be better information and then pro going forward with that process. 100 percent. And you remember my, my issue with the abutters. The only issue that I have with a public hearing, and we just had one for the tax rate, and we had one for the ZBA, and we've all been to them. Oh yeah. Whole hearings, yeah. everything. Nobody shows for them. Well, and again, if we can get correspondence out ahead of that, it's and, and, still and, you could and, send a yeah. certified return receipt letter. Right? Yeah. So, and they still don't so I, you may be a door knocking campaign yeah. where we physically sure. Because right? yeah. it obviously does impact. Now, is it the same? Is it anybody within three hundred feet of the property, or is it left? Because I know, like with the assessors, when things come up, it's anybody who's within three hundred feet. It's gonna, it's gonna stretch out beyond. Too. You're gonna have people that aren't the butters that are gonna have a voice in this. Okay. They're gonna want to have a voice. So, okay. obviously, you touch the butters, and this is only an informational yeah, hearing. It's, it's yeah. all. It's, okay. This isn't. This isn't a legal. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. No, but I, but I think it's moving in the right direction. Yes, I, I mean, do too. Yeah. We, I we've do. got a shallow pond, reduce it by a f depth of a foot to take care of the dam, and it's just very practical that this is the way to go. Yeah. Any yeah. further discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else, Bruce? I the only one talking today. Yeah. Cool the hill. How we doing? <laughs> We're doing good. Guy and Drew Fleet. Yeah. Good. All right. That's a quick answer. Um. Restrooms. Restrooms. Yeah. I was in your office the other day, and I was uh, showed a print that showed we're going to be installing four stalls in that area. Telling you what I was told, telling you what I was shown. Stalls or toilets? Toilets, you know. Okay, yeah. Well, well the, the plan is that's the female bathroom. Where we're sitting now will be the male bathroom. So to bring that up, just do it as a female bathroom to go to the plan that we have in the office. So this isn't at all what we talked about in probably the last department head meeting. I don't know about the department head meeting. I think we talked about it at the department head meeting. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm assuming you're referring to putting a kitchen in there as well? Yes. Yeah, I think we discussed not putting the kitchen right, in there. Right, to build out the So bathroom. where are we going with the assessors then? That room over there. Possibly splitting it in half. What kitchen. are we doing for handicap accessibility? For the bathroom? Yeah. That would be a handicap accessibility. Are you in a second bathroom then? Technically, yes. yes. No, that's not technically. It's either, it either is or it isn't. It, it is, but long term, if that would be the female bathroom. Okay. The desire is to bring it up to the plan that yeah. we talked about and not to rehab a kitchen slash bath after right. the fact because that handicapped bath is that last stall in the back here. Okay, and what are we doing with a kitchen or our slop sink for the custodian? If we can maintain mm -hmm. that, we have Tantasco working on plans for that. If not, once this is done, the existing bathroom now mm -hmm. would become that pseudo kitchen. Doesn't that drain well, well, the dry well right now? Yeah, we have to meet with the uh, Board, of, board of Health on Monday. But I don't really care about a kitchen. I eat my office anyway, but other people might. Yeah, yeah that's why we haven't lost sight of it. But you have lost sight of it. When you renovate that, put the assessors over here, the kitchen is gone for a great number of years. Not at all. This partition, you have a door here for access to the assessors, and you have a door here to access to it. I, I walked through there and measured the square footage, and... The architect was marginal on whether there was enough room there for the assessors. There was, but that left the copy machine over there as maybe a small file cabinet room with a copy mm -hmm. machine. I still don't know where we're going to move that and have the kitchen involved. 
And then you also need a place for your, for your mail room, too, for everybody's Right, right. Mail. So that would, have, that would have left that area for that type yeah. of stuff. So I don't see where a kitchen's going to fit in there unless we start relocating all the file cabinets. It, there'd have to be some movement, correct? This banquet table can move. We could put the copy right in that corner. We could put them. It's a lot so of so this hall is going to be renovated then? Eventually. Eventually, but not in this space. Right now, it would be a dislocation of the assessor's office to that location, the kitchen, if we could keep it as a kitchen. Yeah, I see, the, that's the problem. I, like I said, I don't care about a kitchen, but I don't see that happening. You have too many file cabinets in what will be the assessor's office to have to be relocated outside of the assessor's yeah. office. Mm -hmm. There's no room for a kitchen there. Well, it's, we can do something. If well, we well, keep the kitchen there, don't we have to keep a sink? It would be yeah. the so doesn't that mean we have to plumb all the way the entire length of the town hall? Well, it's already plumbed. No, you're absolutely no. correct, Cindy. Well, I was in here with the plumber that day. There's no vent on that kitchen sink. Right, yes. No vent. He you said if we move the sink, you have to vent it. Yeah. I can't right. touch it. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, no, so. What are we going to do, put a pump in to get over here? No. No, no. well, the plumbing's there now currently with no vent. I know on islands, I don't know if it's still code, I don't know if they changed the plumbing code, but you can vent an island within the actual island because there's no structure to vent it out to the roof. So that's something that I'd ask Tantas to look into as well. So is that sink going to go to the septic system? Right, and well it is now currently. It's going Not to the septic system, system to, the, to the cesspool. But I have a meeting with the Board of Health on Monday to... It doesn't comply to Title V. We have a discussion on Monday over that. No, it has to go away. Unless we push the assessors on this half of it well, and leave the sink where it is. I thought we were going to move the sink. <coughs> Will the plumbing code allow us to move the sink? Yeah. That's, that's where we have to have that conversation. Okay. And it, all it is is a vent and then the Title V issue, which we meet on Monday on. Do you have a slop sink going in for the custodian with the bathroom renovation? Please, do something for him. Yeah. The desire is to, yes. Yes. Okay. But it all hinges on getting that bathroom done first, and then what we're going to do with well, the yeah, existing bathroom. When you put the bathroom in, the plumbing should be put in, so that if that's the custodian's closet yeah. where he is today, mm -hmm. something should be done so he has his own sink area in there. Dumping the floor water down the kitchen sink. That's been, that's been going down there for it years. Isn't there. <laughs> it isn't. Well. It's always been used that way. Well, that's a good yeah. uh, liaison in the town hall for projects. <clears throat> we need one. I don't care who it is, but I walked around the town hall with six different plumbers and probably two or three heating different different heating contractors only because Karen said, hey Bruce, can you take these guys around? Yeah. Yeah, I can. So what do you want done? Are you our lead? What do you, what do you want done? I don't know. And neither did I. All I could do is point out this is our two furnaces, and this is our bathroom area, our plumbing area. Before we call in contractors, we would really need to have some identified projects and say to somebody, do you understand what's going to happen here? Because if you're around, maybe you can show them around. Well, I've been doing that through phone conversations when they come in. They'll call me and I'll walk them through it. Okay. But do we want to have liaison? I mean, on doesn't, board? Doesn't work, no, Steve, well. that's all. You never know when they're coming in. Well, that would be up to yeah. the, the parties to make an appointment. Right. Well, that's just through the selectman's yeah. office. Yes. And then they come right. in at their own discretion mm -hmm. when they can. Like I said, I think it would it'd be helpful if mm -hmm. someone was here. It could be Peter, it could be me, it could be her. But we need to know what the projects are that you want conveyed to the contractors. Uh, I think it's a good idea to have, you know, have somebody here that can walk around with these people and show them just what has to be done. I mean, even Karen could do a fine yeah. job if she knows she, what the projects are. I, th I think the assumption's been that Bruce in this building knows what's going on, but he's saying he doesn't. So if, if we do look to no, obvious, obviously I don't, Steve, because yeah, no, I didn't know that bathroom was being yeah. forced off. So, so if, well, if we're going to take the bathroom, the uh, gentleman that did the fire station wanted to bid on this as well, and I walked him through that over the phone as well. So, um, but you're not always here, so dedicating a liaison. But I, I'm not opposed to keeping people in the mix. I thought, you know, the assumption was people were in the mix. No, we were pretty void of knowledge this summer when people were walking through the town hall. But just letting you know, that's yeah. all. You know? Noted. So we'll, we'll do a better job of making sure that things are documented for people to walk through. Sure. Okay. So, so I have. 
Mm -hmm. So while we're talking about the town hall, can we talk about the town hall roof? What about it? Snow and ice. Can we do something for when the snow comes off this town hall roof to break it up so the people on the sidewalk don't get hit with it? Yeah. We've had a discussion um, right when it was installed, putting up breakers, bigger ones. We're going to take an engineer stamp as well. It's going to be a lot of money. Yeah. Um, they basically said that it wouldn't be worth the money. I think, Don, you were involved in that conversation as well years ago. Yeah, we looked at uh, putting in uh, snow cleats. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that are there are uh, not inadequate. inadequate mm -hmm. right? Uh, there are a couple of different options. It is relatively expensive, but uh, I think it's something you've got to do. I think. Yeah, but then someone made the point that a lot of that melts before it even hits as well. No way. No. Mm -hmm. When, when I've been is. in the town hall, when the snow comes off yeah. the south side, you hear it, it sounds like a freight train. Oh, and it hits yes. on the sidewalk. Yeah. But then the issue of the breakers, that it wasn't going to alleviate that either. Sure it would. What, they're not really breakers, they're snow cleats, and what it does, it keeps the snow from sliding, allows it to melt. Uh, but the, it, what it needs to be done is a study and how, uh, have but we did that, we brought that engineer in. We did, and uh, like I say, there are a couple of different options uh, as far as how you can do that. But, but we, we decided none of them would be worth the expense. If memory serves, that was like three, four years ago. Don't we still have money in the town hall roof account? I don't think so. Yes, we do. Yes, yes there is. You did. asked Betty yesterday. How much? 15000 15000 Somebody is going to get when that snow comes off. It, at, the, at the very least, you should do it over the, you know, over the door. Well, I know of, I know of well, probably three vehicles that the roofs have been flattened on. Yes, I, I was just going to mention that. It's when no we joke. Used, when we used to have the senior citizens up here, they used to meet, I remember the snow coming off and it did, it flattened somebody's uh, roof, it broke all the windows in the yep. vehicle and they were parked right out there in the handicap. Listen to the town, you know, she's selecting the town clerk, she's been here. <laughs> <laughs> but over the door we were advised that the valleys would eliminate that as well, that there's a valley over that door. What do you mean a valley over the door? There's a valley over the doorway because there's a uh, gable over there. But it's, it's. It's more than you have to slow it down. It can yeah. come off the roof, mm. but it comes off the roof and actually lands on the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was yeah, part yeah. of the discussion is that you're not slowing it down. Oh, yes, you will. Mm. Snow yeah. school, the school's got them on. I've seen, I've seen, well, the school had, what, which school? Elementary? Elementary school. I'm going to talk about Tantasqua. Tantasqua is a metal roof, and that snow, if it's bad enough, we're taking down those breakers. Yeah. Well, the breakers aren't rugged enough to hold it up there. Yeah. Didn't one year, um, didn't we put some snow fencing around one year so that people wouldn't? Yeah. No, something's got to be done because we can't have somebody get hurt. I'm there. very surprised our insurance companies allowed us to go this many years. When we all sit here and say we have a problem. Mm -hmm. What's the issue? You're on tape today. Well, we've been, been on tape we, many, many times. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it, it, we, we've had in-depth conversations with licensed engineers yeah. in regards to this. It's, it's nothing that we've uh, turned a blind eye to. But if you want me to reach out to individuals again, I'll take it and then report it once I yes. have information. Yeah. I'm going to probably say it's not going to be done this year. Probably not. But well, we have to do something. Should we something. then put the snow fence back up for this year? Yeah, probably. No, we're going to cross our fingers and hope that there's no snow this year. That works too. Check us on that one. And then actually out here, now yes. we have the parking lines. If people park close to the building out here, north side doesn't come off as quickly as mm -hmm. the south side. Yeah. But I would hate to have it come down on somebody's vehicle out here. Yeah. It's going to come down even quicker. We have signs out there, don't we, for liability issues? There's no signs? I thought we had. No, this is what City talked about just a minute ago. Is there a sign on the building? No, on the front, they're in the cellar, they're temporary. There used to be in buckets, right? I thought there was signs up there in winter. Well, yeah, the oh, so they put them up against the trees. Yeah. We do need some signs uh, probably out front. I think, too, we, should, I think we should attach signs to the building. Yeah. Like, watch out for. Every like six to eight feet. Oh, Can you take so. care of that? 
Can I take care of them? We can take them out of the basement first off, right? That's who we have. Yeah. You know? But, but you there again, we'll put up the temporary, we'll put up the winter signage and fencing. Mm. Yeah. If we need signs made, we can make the signs, but yeah. I don't think we have them. Well, that brings me to the next But I'm not going to attach them to the building. Okay. <laughs> that, that wasn't the, the intent. Um, South Pond, have you made sign, a draft for that yet? No. Okay. Can we get to that too before the snow melts? We can get to it by spring. I was just going through the minutes and I noticed the last discussion. Anything else, Cindy? Um, yeah, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. I heard through the grapevine that the finance policy that Bruce and I worked on was implemented. What finance policy? The, the one, one that all of us? The three of us worked on. Yeah. Was it? I think July 1st it was yeah. implemented. Could we get copies of that? It's been in the selectman's office. You've been working on it. Um, None of us have seen it. <laughs> it was voted in a meeting yeah, on we tape. Yeah, we voted for it. Um, <coughs> it's going to require department head signatures. We have forms now in Excel format for um, you know, payroll and whatnot. So if you guys want to look at that as well. And then just the required signatures of the department heads. So, so could we get an email to the yeah, Chris, the department the department heads? Email. To all the department heads. Thank you. Um, I think we had asked Karen to email yeah. all the department heads when we voted. We didn't know it was ever adopted. No, we didn't know no, it was adopted. It was. Um, credit card. Mm -hmm. It's becoming more and more difficult to order items because we're all going to use our personal credit cards to order things, like including municipal. You have to pay an 8% um, buyer's fee to municipal. It's it's difficult for some of us to put hundreds of thousands of dollars on our personal credit cards. Is the time now maybe to look into the town getting a credit card? I believe. What, what's Be Betty? Betty's been the biggest person against this. What? what we do. I think we're doing it the same yeah, thing. I but feel every like, every year it comes up. Yeah. And another thing, I I feel it needs to be done. I think everybody needs some petty cash too, because you know a lot of times. You well, have part of, part of that new yeah. finance yeah. establishes a petty cash. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that would also be wonderful. And stamps are not a big deal. You can, but but when you're asking an employee to put yeah. hundreds of dollars on their personal credit yeah. card, the, the, that's not. I don't the, think that's the, right. The electrical inspector did it for cameras. Yeah. You know, Herb did. Yeah. One of you guys. Yeah. We've all, all, all done it. We've all done it, but you know. we all have. So I, I think that discussion has to come through the accountant and possibly treasurer because they seem to be. Even if it were a credit card that the treasurer controlled, yeah. control. Control. But there, like, there was a history of someone misusing it, wasn't there? I never knew we had one. Was that I never tax? knew we had one. Well, that, yeah. that was uh, yeah. had it Staples or something. Either it was Staples or Home Depot or something yeah. like that, there was an issue. And uh, I think the issue was, I think somebody had used it and they put personal things on it. Yeah. And that's what the problem well, was. Like Cindy suggested, we could actually just hand the, the appropriate person mm -hmm. right. the order and say, you yeah. place the order, now you're in control mm -hmm. of it. I'm not opposed to that at all. You know, I'll, I'll give you a, a small example down at the highway crash here. We got a tire that's got a slice in it. This chemical and unit that we have to buy is online. That's the only place that we can buy it. You know, last time I bought it, I don't know, it was between 40 and 60 bucks, I think it was. You know, I paid for it myself. You know, we actually need some more again. You know, and I'm debating whether or not if I'm even going to buy it myself. Yeah, so I'm going to reach out to the treasurer when I see her, and we'll put it on yeah. Tuesday night's agenda. Yeah. And just to go a little bit more with that, Bruce and I, you know, we've done a lot of work this summer and stuff. The blades for the cutoff sauce and stuff, we had to buy it from our vendors. We can actually buy it online, the same exact thing, for a third less or better. So math says to take and buy it online. But we can't. You know, we're not going to keep tying up our, our money and everything else. Betty doesn't sure. like us doing it. She yeah. allows us to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like she it. hems and hauls about it. Yeah, so I reach out to Sandy and we'll have it on Tuesday night. Because, and, uh, yeah. One or the other. Right, exactly. Because the only trouble, say, if we keep them, um, letting them order on their credit cards and then they put in you know, expenses and then at the end of the year, um, 
we have to give them, what is it, a W-40? Yeah. Is that what it is? And I mean, yeah. we, they on, shouldn't have to be paying taxes on money that they've already spent. Yeah, on that, on the town credit card, it does I happen. don't know where the ins, ins yeah. and outs may be on this. I don't know if you need to talk to town council about it or talk to the DOR or whoever it may yeah. be. And just it's try not, to it's not rocket science, I think, yeah. Herb. I think the, the issue is trust. Yeah. It, and if, if yeah. it's just the treasurer having control over it, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to that either. But I don't think Sandy's ever been brought in on the discussion. Right. All right. It also ties into the whole tax exempt thing because when yeah. somebody yeah. personally charges it, yeah, yeah we we end up eating all the taxes. On it. We yeah, and taxes. Betty, well, I've been actually, there, been there, done that. As actually, well. just as a FYI, even if you don't have a town credit card, if you can show that you're purchasing it for the town and have a copy of the tax. We've, we've tried to do that yeah. a couple yeah. times, and they said no way. Yeah. Really? Yes. yes. No. They, they some, used some, to some, some entities won't well, do it. Yeah, some we're, entities, we're probably talking yeah. online entities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they right. won't take it. They're not going to do it. Like small, small ones, like, you know, if you could put down a staple, yeah, you know, staples will do it. But and Bet is the one them. that has that, and we've all, I don't know if Clarence has been there, but we've all yeah. been there trying to get that yeah. going down to Home Depot, going to staples, yeah. and saving the town money. So we'll talk about that. And okay. then my last question is about the volunteers policy. Yeah. I was wondering if perhaps it was time to rescind it. The volunteer, what do you mean? You have a policy that there are no volunteers in the town of It started out as a policy regarding volunteers driving town equipment. And then it was changed to amend the volunteer driving policy to include all volunteers regardless of department. I don't think it's a volunteer. We discussed this last month at a morning meeting because you had requested that we rescind the driving of the town vehicles for volunteers. And we pulled it out, and that's just a different copy that we had in the file. Oh, this was done back. Yeah, this is just about driving. Well, I think we've had volunteers driving town vehicles, so. Oh yeah, they they shouldn't be. Because <laughs> they're not. Perhaps sure. it's time to re either rescind the policy or enforce the policy. Well, it needs to be enforced, and we would hope that our department heads would enforce the policy that this board set. And we had this discussion a month ago, if you remember correctly, in the selectmen's office. So the the one that comes to mind, the example that would come to mind is the uh, mowing of the common. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that individual uh, a volunteer or? Mm -hmm. that? He is a volunteer. Yeah, so that's where that rub comes. He, he's an elected official. Mm -hmm. that, that, that also is true, but in um, particu that particular instance, he's volunteering to do that. He's but this this was, uh, the motion says class D vehicles, not yeah. long motors. Not long motors, yeah. Ah, all right, all right, okay. all right, I see. Okay, that's that. That was the one that comes to mind for mm -hmm. me, anyway. So you'd like us to rescind this, Cindy? Well, either rescind it or enforce it. You know, it's mm -hmm. okay. It, it can't be a policy that we maybe sometimes possibly use. If it's a policy, it's a policy. Well, again, this goes back to the departments enforcing it. Something that we mm -hmm. have. Are you guys letting volunteers drive Class D vehicles? Or do you want, that's the other thing. Or do you want to allow volunteers? I, I don't. The issue is insur insurance, insurance liability. Because. Every, every time we've talked to Larry Joseph about this. He said it's not an issue. It's not an issue. It's covered no matter what. Now, these drivers that you, these volunteers, they. You if make, somebody wants you to make take sure the water that they the have. I'll, I'll give you an example. Trash. They can't do it. Who? Oh, but who's the volunteer doing it? Any volunteer in town, Don Taft, wants to take a one-ton truck, pick up trash, he can't do it, according to this policy. I'd argue Don Taft's an elected official as well. But these people But he's elected like as a water commissioner, so therefore he's performing a task outside of his elected mm -hmm. capacity. If he's volunteering to pick up trash, the water commissioners don't usually pick up trash. I, I, I don't want anybody that's 
not under insurance driving any of our vehicles. Well, in that case, everybody that's not in that department and everything else should not be driving vehicles for the town, period. I, and that's got a proved whatever. I don't think that's, I don't, that's not what this policy says, Herb. You but have, that's you what have, you're you have, getting you have, at. You have a no, you have a tendency to, to go to extremes to make arguments. I, I respect it because I do as well, but that's not even this point. So, so let's use the example of the cemetery. The cemetery mm -hmm. needs to use a one-ton truck yeah. when the highway department digs a grave. Yeah. Mike Siri drives the one-ton truck. Mm -hmm. Mike Siri is the town clerk. Mike Siri has about five different hats in this that he gets a paycheck. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a cemetery commissioner, which in my... He's a yeah, cemetery superintendent. superintendent. Yeah, he's not a commissioner. So, which which yeah. is even better. It makes a better point in my argument that... This, the, that but the is Mike Siri's <laughs> license... All the highway department's licenses have to go to the insurance company. Yeah. Every one, once a year, I send a list of everybody who drives a highway department vehicle, including my own, myself. Um, I don't think we'd ever do that mm -hmm. with like Mike Siri. Yeah. You know, those those people who occasionally drive a vehicle. So then, are they volunteers or are they performing it in a town employee capacity? And yeah. if it's a town employee capacity, shouldn't we be sending their licenses? That's a question to Larry. Mm -hmm. But in, in your example, Mike's an employee of the town, mm -hmm. and I have no problem with Mike driving a Class D vehicle. Now, with these Class D vehicles, do you have to have um, a special license? No, it's, no, class class D. Oh, it's, it's, it's a regular driver's license. That's, that's all that we have, okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, no, a special license would be a whole different. Yeah. So, no, I, I kind of, I think that anybody, I kind of agree with Cindy, anybody that drives these vehicles should be on the town insurance. So, as a driver. As a driver. For those specific vehicles, though, I mean, because I, I send my guys in to the insurance every year, but recently I've been taking Herb's truck to help yeah. get stuff out of the thing. Now, he doesn't need to send my name in because I've already sent my yeah, name right. in. Right. Is that what you're saying there? Your name's on the policy. Yeah. Right. But, like, if Mike Siri, for an example, like you yeah, said, I'm, I'm he should. I'm picking uh, on Mike because I'll no, so Mike's name, mind. If, if Larry requires us yep. to have every licensed driver, yep. we should be. Sure tallying every licensed driver that's driving a vehicle. And, and Nobody that's on that list should be driving, based on this policy, any of our Class D vehicles. And then maybe, maybe I don't know how Don feels on it. I mean, with him being on the QQ LA, I mean, if there was trash down there at the, um, you know, down the South Pond, and if you need to clean that up and borrow a truck to do it, your name should even be on. Have you ever borrowed a truck to do it? No. No, but just I'm just saying, just in case. No, but you we ever were down cleaning up the campground, and that. If, if we just <laughs> simply have a list in the selectman's office. If you, if you, I don't want to say wish to drive a town vehicle, but if you are going to drive a town vehicle, you must sign up first. Yeah. At least, okay. at least you'll have an ongoing yeah. list. But that would be at the discretion, in my opinion, of Larry, of what he requires for licenses. He might not require anything. But the selectmen want to know who's I driving them. I think the them. selectmen, that it's a li because it's a liability on us. But that's what this policy not. is, is town employees are the only people that should be driving the vehicle, period. But there still should be a list of them, I think, who is driving them. Yeah, our town employees have the ability yeah. to drive any vehicle they can. I'm, I'm and, not going to, you know, and that, right, no, we're not, not going to have no. Cindy get into a, a Class A vehicle. And, right. No, so, but the gray area is someone like Donald Taft. Yeah. He is elected. Is, is that a town employee? That was that was going to be my question. You know? I would argue yes. Okay, fine. That's an answer then. Okay. Is that a question for Larry? I guess possibly. That, I think yeah. I think the underlying question for Larry is what does he need for licenses, and what is yeah. our liability in regards to people yes. driving the Class D vehicles? Shall I reach out to him and if see if we can get an answer to it? And whether an elected. Is considered a town employee or a volunteer of some sort. Okay. Operating on, obviously operating under the uh, town. But, but that capacity. gets but that gets into and, and and we can go even deeper into this. We have a poly, a program that we've had for three or four years. Nobody's taken advantage of it. Seniors or veterans. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I really don't want no. either of those individuals. Driving around a one-ton no, pickup I don't, truck I don't on the want roads of Brookfield, one right, but that would be yeah. up to the department head whether they. It would be up to this yeah. policy that they can't. That's one of the underlying reasons yeah. of this policy. Yeah, but I think. And then your point of the lawnmower, Steve. Actually, what's our liability? We had this discussion 
last week, uh, last month as well. For a volunteer. Yeah. I, I'm more concerned about a lawnmower on the common than a Class D driving up and down Route 9. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think having the information and then route reviewing or whatever. What's so maybe that's, that's a question for Larry. Um, but me, my argument was that he's an elected official yeah. for the cemetery department that mows those fields down there as well. Yeah. You know, I've made the problem myself with the town's lawnmower. Uh, I'm an elected official. I, I know how to run a lawnmower. Yeah. I didn't cut my leg off. I didn't take any dogs out. But that's the extreme. And again, that's why I respect the extremes because that could be the ramification of maiming or killing somebody. I think given that information, we then can readdress what, what the policy is to make sure that we're consistent. Could, could you answer me a question on policy? We have bylaws in this town and we have policies. What's the difference? And where do you draw the line on what is the, and what is the, the strength of a policy is enough in this case, it doesn't have to be a bylaw. I think it's a law, I think. But well, no, bylaws, bylaws have to be approved by the Attorney General's office. I, I, I know, I know the, the procedure to yeah. create a bylaw, yeah. but at that board up there, when do you decide this could be a policy, but that must be a bylaw? I think Mass General Law dictates it. it does. Yeah. So, so, so there's law. actually three tiers. There's actually a, a, the level of bylaw, again, Mass General mm -hmm. Law. And, and like, you know, I go to our personnel booklet and we have a, a bylaw that says you get X amount of holidays off a year. Our bylaw says... Well, that's what the town voted in. I understand that, but to, to, to me, that was somebody that wanted the town to vote on it versus the Board of Selectmen. Right. Because technically, we don't even need that in our bylaws. Master in the Law says we don't need that part Absolutely. in our bylaws. We can take that out completely. But some, a citizen petitioned. Right, and I understand why they did. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it, but I understand why they did, because mm -hmm. they don't want the Board of Selectmen uh, having ill feelings against a group of employees and saying, we're going to remove this policy. We're going to change the policy. The bylaw, you can't change that easily. Well, I think the, the bylaw, I mean, the personnel committee is talking about removing that from the bylaws as well now. I would argue against that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, the, the, we're not we're, talking about removing the entire thing. We're talking about removing. Okay. We're in, our intent at this point is to leave the first paragraph yes. in and remove all the uh, rest all of the, rest. the personnel yeah. stuff and create an employee here. Which is policy. Yes. And then the third level that you need to get to are work instructions, which are essentially our job descriptions, or the way we're handling it today, our job descriptions. And each of those, at each three levels, they need to be tied and in sync with one another. We, we, we just, we've been working on those also. We, do we have a lot of job, uh, job descriptions already in place. Exactly. I'm not saying that yeah. they're not in place. What, what I'm saying is Bruce asked the question of policy versus bylaw. By law, yes, down the path of mass general law. Second is how you run your town. You have policies that run your town, and then what you then need to link to that, whether through job descriptions or otherwise, are work instructions. And we are going through a process right now of evaluating job descriptions, right? Yeah. Yes, right. we are. The bylaws state the positions that the town holds as a bylaw. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. When it says water superintendent, is that attached to a particular job description? Should be. Then, then is that job description part of the bylaw? Absolutely linked. Absolutely. Yeah, and see, so I don't, think it, we've ever, I don't think we've ever done that part of it. No, this is yeah, going to be different. All job descriptions have been done through, in my history, yeah. through the board of selectmen. They're, they're sure. not in the bylaws. Right. To but, me, a bylaw supersedes a policy. Um, yes. Oh, absolutely. Still, I spent a year yeah. changing. A job description, and it was definitely through the bylaws. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we're there today. Well, I I know about two years ago we went through about five or six different job descriptions, and they were approved by the selectmen. What we're doing with the job descriptions is we're taking the Coltman and Page format. And that's what we did as and well. And fitting Brookfield's yeah. job fitting descriptions Brookfield into, into those formats. Well, then we're don't then don't lose sight of what we did around two or three years ago because we already did some of that. We're, to, we're having each department come in and talk we, to us about We did the same exact thing. Yep. So it's the select one, the select one's turn, which is next month. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just telling you, just there's no need to reinvent the wheel yeah. on some of it. Just oh, take, no, we're not. Take, no, we're not. take a look at what we did. Yeah. But so so we're then do we have to adopt the new job descriptions as bylaw? 
No. No, because we're going to no. try to get. No, it would just. It just probably be selectman's approval. Isn't that what we said when we do the new handbook? But, but the title is the, is is bylaw. Correct. But the description which, doesn't which, have to be. Which sets the step in grade as well. Right. That's all I'm asking, though. The title is bylaw. But Today, the, the, but I'm thinking that the personnel board is actually looking at yeah. the bylaw itself yes. and, and pulling out much of what's in the bylaw today and putting it in the handbook. Yeah, like rescinding it. We want to we want to have them all rescinded. Okay. Right. We, the recommendation we at the last special town meeting was not even to put in the assistant or principal, whatever we're calling the yeah. new assessor that we voted on. Mm -hmm. you know, Michelle recommended don't even do it, but there was a desire to do it. Yeah. So we did. No, I just think over the years that I've been here, I've seen policies created, and I always wondered at what point does someone say, well, this is a policy, but this must be a bylaw. Just particular preference on the person I, I adopting think it, I think the regulation. I think it's politics. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very short answer. Uh, Cindy, while we have you and Herb here still, too, we had a gentleman that reached out to our um, police chief in regards to crosswalk, uh, that crosswalk again between, is it Mill Street? Yes, Mill Street. And it's at the intersection of Mill Street, Pleasant Street, Lower River yeah, Street. Yeah. Well, not so much Lower River, but the other side, the Mill Street. We, Massachusetts state law says you cannot put in a crosswalk if there is no sidewalk. And and that was it. We brought this up two years ago. Yes, you did. Yeah. No, don't, don't, no, I don't know. I know. Don't shoot the message. Can I say something? Yeah. That person that is constantly complaining about that. Well, it's not complaining, mm -hmm. so let's... Well, require, yeah. requesting, requesting. How, however you want to put it, requesting this. It'd be nice if that person would walk on the sidewalks that are there existing. Again, the messenger. So yeah. I'm, I'm just oh, relaying yeah. that and... I, I can send <coughs> out that copy again, Steve, if you I, I don't, I don't so. need it. I, once, once the chief talked to me about it, I've literally gone and I did it again this morning. I drove around up and down Howard Street. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a crosswalk going towards Howard Street, and bang, there's a yeah. sidewalk in Howard Street. Yeah. Right. You know, there's a sidewalk goes to a sidewalk. And that was the argument I made last time. Crosswalk. Um, he, he's come to me a couple times, and, and the reason why he came again was because he was under the impression, as was I, that it would be revisited after the bridge is redone. Because I think he was told that that the line of sight wasn't good. Um, I, I don't know that he knows that it's a state law that says you can't build a crosswalk. We told him that two years well, ago, Mike. Yeah. Okay, if, if we have something in writing, I can take that back to him and tell him that that's the case. Right. I, 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 I think he understands that that's not the case, and, I'm, I, and I don't want to misquote him. I thought he said he reached out and that wasn't the case. So if, if we do have something in writing from the state, I, I could show him that and then that would yeah. You know, solve that. But and I couldn't see that's why he came back again is because, and I remember it the last time we discussed it at a meeting was, well, let's just hold off until the bridge is done. But these, yeah, the, the line of sight was an issue that was brought up. Um, it might have been a revisit kind of thing, but I think the underlying issue was that it corrected, it connected a sidewalk to nowhere. Right. Right. And, 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 and he's told me that, that that doesn't matter. And I, I don't want to misquote him. Well, I it, think it, he said contact the state. It does well, matter. It does, to me, it matters because can I, can I suggest something? If we're, if we're putting a crosswalk across into the woods, you know, not, now we're, we're allowing people to walk across a street protected to, 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 no, to, no, to nothing that is protected. But I don't know that he wants it to go all the way across both roads. He doesn't. I don't. I don't think he wants to go to cross Mill and Pleasant. I think he's just looking to go to cross Mill because he says people are going through Mill. There was just okay. a big discussion on Bay State Roads listserv that I follow, and crosswalks were one of the topics. And the liability to the town, if you put in a crosswalk, is that you are saying that's a safe place to cross the street. Right. And so you have, a, you have an island there. So it would be a crosswalk to the island. We can we cannot legally put a crosswalk across there because you don't legally have a handicap ramp. Well, there is one there now, isn't there? No, there isn't. The bridge didn't put one there. Billy, no. The this this place on the bridge, he wants it parallel with River Street, the crosswalk. There's no handicap ramp there. We asked the state when they were doing the railroad bridge to put a handicap ramp there so we could take and do this. 
they told us they legally could not put a handicap ramp there. They did put one in. But it's to the highway project. It's down on Mill Street. Old bridge project. So do we want to put a crosswalk from that handicap? To me, that's horrible. He'll come around. He'll never use it. I don't think he no. wants it down there either. I, I think he'll never use it. I think I suggested that to him, and I think he said it's just. By then, you would really obstruct the site or something like that. It's probably safer to have it up close to 148 because they can see you if, if they're coming off of it and then they're turning down Mill Street and you're further down, they're not going to see you until they're around that corner. Because there is one going to Howard Street because there's a site, and that mm -hmm. sidewalk just stops abruptly there. Mm -hmm. At the end of the Pleasant yeah. Street. Yeah. Well, sidewalks do stop someplace. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that mm -hmm. the issue was. Crosswalk to nowhere. Yeah, good. Yeah. All right, I think we're done with that discussion. Any other uh, highway issues? Oh, I think she does. She's just forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> That's very possible. The last few days, it's right. yes. We both, Cindy and I both have one, uh, but it's going to the personnel board first, the uh, a, uh, job wage authorization. wage authorization for a part time plow operator that put in paperwork earlier this a week or so ago because I may need another plow operator that because I'm down one right at the moment so and this gentleman is interested in stuff so I told him I put him in for it he's from town <coughs> excuse me so that'll be coming to the board of selectmen once the uh, personnel board gets done with it yeah, that's not an issue still one more so go what for did it. I forget we went to Massachusetts uh, uh, well, CMRPC meeting, right? And we heard how we could improve our grants. And so because we've heard how we can improve our grants, I want to bring it up today, nothing that we need to act on today, but we need to noodle on what best practice we w wish to have shared with the town so that we can get some additional points as we apply for grants. And what I'm referring to is the Massachusetts Community Compact Initiative that the lieutenant governor is going around the state trying to push, back, push promote best practices yeah. amongst towns and the like. Should we decide to sign up for this? And I would recommend that we do. It, it offers us points. And when, it, when I look at the Mass Works uh, grant that we were not approved for, though I was okay that it would not be approved this year for next year, but, but for the following year, we need to really consider it. And to have this Mass community contact initiative move forward would in fact help us. Yeah. And so the, it, the, there are several areas that could be involved. And I'll just throw out the, the high, the best practices that we could apply for. Most towns apply for uh, two or three of these. Could be in the areas of education, energy, financial management, housing, information technology, transportation, or regionalization. I think, Cindy, we came up with two that were really in the area of finance, long-term planning and the like. Um, capital planning might be something that we could say that we would like to have shared with us best practices mm -hmm. so that we could understand what we may want to do in those areas. But again, I think that uh, we need to share this information and with it uh, in coming weeks and months, uh, put ourselves in position to, to uh, sign up for this so that, in fact, it will help the town overall. Cindy was, I mean, uh, those were the two that we thought. Yes. There, there were others, but I think that the, the capital planning and the long-range planning would fit with the things that I think that we, w we need to be thinking about. Thank you. No, thank you. Herb just handed me a list. Cheat sheet. <laughs> Oh, that's the trees. That was the this second. This is trees. Thing. Yes, the trees. This is trees. We need to have a meeting. We have been getting an increasing number of calls at the highway department from residents concerned about trees. Um, so yes, we if, it, if we could schedule a meeting. Well, if you can forward, if you can get that in an email form, forward it to Karen, and then have Karen send it to the uh, tree warden, CCing us. Um, I know he had requested a public hearing. Yeah, he, yeah. Had, he had to set yes. that in print. It's not on Karen to uh, get that advertisement yeah. together. So the last I knew, he was supposed to put together the advertisement, then we go out for a public hearing on the shade tree issue. So I think if Cindy can put that 
in, in email form, that would be great to get it to Karen. And I think what we, at the end of that to propose, we, we had talked about a meeting, and this is really the impetus for, for the meeting is Herb can take care of a bunch of that. Right. And so that- the That would fall within scenic areas? No, it's Qua well, Quaybo. The one I saw was Quaybo Street. No, no, none of the ones that, that he's listed here. Quaybo Street, in particular, has been one that the if, entire road needs to be trimmed. Yeah, and if that's does. not a scenic road. If none of those fall within scenic, I don't see why we can't just give the permission to the well, department to do it now. Well, I think that there was a couple of trees where you needed assistance and you needed a subcontractor. Correct. And so because it's a subcontractor working on trees, that those dollars should be coming from the tree account. So I think by having yeah. a meeting with the tree warden to make sure we're all in agreement. Do we need a meeting or should we just do this through email and get it done? It's up to him, I think. If you can get an email together, I'll make it happen. I'll make sure that I'm okay. in communication okay. with you. And, uh, okay, sure. I don't think we need a meeting to bog it down anymore. Sure. Well, I think... The, the weather is... If we could get this done soon. Yeah. Um, I think in a lot of these That'd trees great, are leftover damage from that 2011 October snowstorm. Yes. And I now so it's too. really Once to Once we're done here, Cindy, I'll call him okay. and then tell him mm -hmm. to get on it. Yeah, Quaybog Street in particular. If, well, if, he, if he has no problem with with taking care of it, can you just coordinate it? And then I'll... As long as he's going to make sure the vendor gets paid if we have yeah. to hire a subcontractor. Well, that's we good. had a problem that's once before, yeah. Yeah. and he would not pay So if he, if, if he gives you okay, we're good, and you can just get yes. going? Yes. Right. Beautiful. So I'll call him once we're done here. That'd be great. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to no. walk out with me? Can I just revisit one, the, 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 uh, the roof on the town hall? If I can help you in any way, I'd be glad to work oh, with definitely. you, uh, do some research or whatever. If I need, let me know. My my first call, to be honest with you, is going to be Donnie Barthium to see if he to see if he has any contacts. Okay. I don't think I want to go through the same engineer that we went through last time. I think that. Well, there's a couple. Uh, there's a fellow on the Lake Association who happens to be a roofing consultant, which I could reach out to. He's not. Well, we we found that we needed an engineered stamp in order to do it, and Jeff yeah. wouldn't. And he has to be licensed to do the work. Jeff wouldn't issue a permit. Well, you can also reach out to a certified slate roof installer, which already has all that. I think we did that too, didn't we? But uh, I think, I we think contacted a couple, but we, I don't think we had anybody come out. I think it all hinges on an engineer's so mm. Everything has to be for, stamped by an engineer now, which costs like i I'd be glad to look into it with you or for you or whatever. Just yeah, if you, can want, if you want to look in as well and get okay. back to me, I'd appreciate that. Okay, we'll do it. Thank you. Chief? Uh, this thermostat's got a box on it. The one in the hallway has half a box on it. And I walked through the other day and the hallway thermostat was at like 75. And then the one in the kitchen doesn't. And the last couple of days the kitchen's been turned down in the 40s. So I don't know. I don't know if we want to put the box back on the one in the hallway, if we want to just put a note on the one in the kitchen, see if that's enough. My history with boxes is that people get impatient, and I was one of them. We had a public hearing in here, and nobody could find the key to it, so I literally ripped the box off the wall because it was like 40 <laughs> degrees in here. Mm -hmm. So they're only as good as the intent yeah. of the person that's willing to obey right, the box. Well, somebody's turning it down in the kitchen, and the employees do eat in there. there have, you had a, have you had a discussion with Paul? Paul might be the one turning it down. I haven't. When I come in, it's been in the afternoon, and I just, I no, I and you just get kind of chill and you look, and I'm just a little surprised that it's down. So. All right, so right. did you just volunteer to talk to Paul about it? Uh, I'll talk to Paul. All right, so let's let's get the history of what's going on. Okay. I'm assuming it's Paul. Possibly, yeah. I mean, if he knows there's nobody meeting, it just, there's always, it just seems there's always somebody meeting in there. Or again, the employees get you know, pizza or whatever, you they go in and that's, that's fine. So, yeah, sure. Um, okay. A couple other things. The upcoming budget season, who's handling that? The board or the advisory committee? I think. Yeah, historically, what we put in place was the advisory committee. Okay. They put the budget together and report back to us. Okay, because they and I don't know what their time frame is, but there's nothing else for us yet. And, and so I'll, I'll, reach, I'll reach out to the chair and remind him that they're responsible. Their, looking at their agendas and their last previous meetings, is when you do find out from them if the board could direct them. I think articles have to be due when the budget is due. 
Well, we had, you were here at that meeting. There was a discussion of when it should be done. Um, so we'll have that discussion with them. I'll call the chair as well today and let him know that he has to get going and advise the department heads. Because we, the budget's done well within a couple of percentage points. And then we'll give them the opportunity. And when we turn in the budget, we've been asked, what do you foresee to be articles? And we put those in. And then it's not until the actual articles are presented that that part of the budget's put in. So we're already just about there. And now we're asking for things. So, so unless it's something that's ongoing, you know, like, it, like air packs, things like that, that they, they see in the previous budgets, if there's not a lot of warning on it, it's too late to do anything about it. I'll reach out to him and have him talk and to us Tuesday okay. about what that plans are. And on that same vein, I think I think the board should direct them. I think we need to set a target and a goal of at least for the next couple of years a target of two hundred thousand dollars for capital improvement. We're not getting there. And, and part of the thing, you know, we're marginalizing some departments. We're we're looking. We're I think we're. We're not investing properly. I, I, if that fund is built up, we're in a position to act on it. So it, I, it's up to the board, but I think that should be directed to them to try to set a, to not try, but to set a target of two hundred thousand in capital improvement. And actually, a former member of the capital improvement committee, he made the point flat out. He looked at everything I had on the list at that time, and he said he felt that that had no purview. With that committee, he said, "No, that's not capital improvement. That's capital replacement. You're not looking for anything better except that it's newer and it runs better." So he, he actually challenged the point that well, capital improvement shouldn't be dealing with things that should be replaced as a matter of course. Well, then there was an argument if that's even a capital improvement, i.e., vehicles. So shouldn't that be in a fleet account? That's that's where the yes, argument that's, was. That's so there, there, were, there were two veins okay. of discussions there because I was on that committee as well. Yeah. So. But I think we need to set a dollar figure and strive towards it. Um, we, we, we seem to have a fixation on a set figure for stabilization. I, I, have, a fixa I have a fixation on $100,000 for fleet stabilization, so. Yes. But I mean, we any, need that given, any given year, my feeling, and, and I defer to the police chief on that one, is four vehicles, he should be doing one a year. So if we do 100,000 there, 40,000 a year is gone for that. And then for the cost of the fire apparatus, hundreds of thousands of dollars, it would take us years to do, and we're already decades behind. So. Anything else? Uh, my last one is on the gas conversion project. Is there any money left over to, I've still got work that has to be done in this generator that's we have, Yeah, we haven't gotten the bills. Did you call him? I talked to him this morning. Okay. Um, the the generator conversion is set to happen on Monday, and that's. The, but you, you coordinated with him. You answered his I, question. I talked to him about that. Um, I told him the meter should be in on Monday. I'll defer to her. We have some breaking news. It's being put on right now. What's that? Meter is being put on right okay. now. So the meter is going on right now. Um, the plumbing for the generator and the generator conversion is happening on Monday. So I brought Nick up to speed so that if you want to be on site to fire his thing up, I don't know if he's had that the wiring inspectors had a little chance to look at his project. I know Mr. Wall has. So, but again, this, this add-on project is a result of that. So I don't know where, if there are any funds to help take care of that project. As, as, I, I think there might be money in there. Yeah. Okay. I know there's money in there because yeah. this one came in under budget. Yeah. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, I would sign off on a warrant for it. For that expense. Now, is, now, I've met Nick quite a few times. Is Nick doing the work or are you having someone else do it? Um, the plumbing part of the generator conversion is done by a contract of a Spencer who happens to be a Spencer plumbing inspector. I had hoped he could also do the generator conversion, but he very quickly said he has a guy that does, when he deals with generator conversions, he does all of them. He's very happy with them. He's worked with them. He's also signed off on them. And so he, He's doing the generator conversions so Monday morning. They're both going to be working in concert. Uh, now, was there any reason why? I mean, Nick, Nick is a certified plumber, and he's done all your work over there. Is there any reason why you didn't choose him to do this conversion? Really, I'm torn. I'm just. I, 
I felt that, I felt that this project could be done better than that project had been done. And uh, the, the gentleman out of Spencer, Mr. Bergeron, came well recommended. So, and it was nowhere near any threshold. It shouldn't be anywhere near any threshold limit for for bidding. It just just felt the quality of it could be on that end could be better. So. Disappointing. That's the first I've heard of it. Yeah, me too. That's the first I've heard of that too. That he didn't do as good of a job. It's the code, and ultimately that's it. But there's a couple little things that could have. So, and so there's a couple of little things. Can you get him to fix? Well, part of them is this all came out of the blue because he told me he didn't know there was propane in the building. So that's the only. That's, that's, that's the only issue that you have is that he didn't see it. And, and the, one of the electricians on the fire department looked at the, the unit installed there and just shook his head and was just in disbelief that, that he, he clarified it's the code, but it just looks bad. When, when, you got a, when you got a wire that's just hanging across five feet like this and somebody can actually grab a hold of it and yank it off. So that, to me, that's unacceptable. You make a yeah. fix. Well, well it, the thing is, it's the code. It's in I, I don't think we have to sign off on the project. Yeah. If, if we're not happy, i.e., you as a department well, over there, I don't want you signing off. Well, I need to see it, whether it works. And uh, I believe somebody reached out to the wiring inspector and said, you know, we're not really yeah. big on this. So when Scott comes in to do his inspection, we'll see where that lands. But, but that you, you understand that you're well within your rights to say, look, we're not going to pay you until you fix and bring it up to what we want. I, I, I'd rather hear from Scott first just to see just how much he can put on it from that specific location aspect than, yeah. than just that. Well, like I guess I I don't think Scott has a problem being the heavy. No. Okay, no, oh, no, that's not. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll call but again, part of it was... My call list is getting pretty big. I'll call Scott as well to make sure he is... We, can't, heavy. we can't have both propane... So it's the, it's the only, only issue is the electrical, the aesthetics of it? I'll come to the phrase attention to detail on some of it. Is it strictly electrical or is it well, the other, piping as well? The piping just, it, I'm not sure, you went over, down, and over rather than just over and down. Well, maybe there's a reason, I don't know, I'm not a plumber. It just doesn't look like it was thought. And, and part of it was just a disappointment that National Grid's been reluctant to put a meter on because they don't allow propane and natural gas in the same building. And this contractor said that he didn't realize there was propane going into the building. I gave up on oversights after a police station missed the mm -hmm. fact that it should have been cast iron instead of right. ABF. But, the, but again, the tank was three feet from where it was working. So if it was a question of interpretation, but you know, I think if, if he picked up on that, then at least we could have asked Grid earlier. And we still would have been in the same position. We just it would have been a few weeks removed. Mm -hmm. So. I didn't realize there was propane over there either. How long has that been there? Oh, 15 years. Well, it's been longer than that. Is it? That one? That goes back to red. Huh? First oh, always you've had to tell no, that, that one. Yeah, but sometimes, I mean, there are ga gasoline fired generators and not all oh, propane. Yeah. So that was the only question I was asking. Oh, this are, is, they don't have to keep, no. But this is the first time that I've heard that there's propane over there also. It's either propane or natural gas that yeah. fires those ones. Yeah. We have two generators. One diesel was propane. And the diesel. propane one you know, on Monday will be converted over to natural gas. Diesel is yeah. very expensive for mm -hmm. uh, the generator. Oh, yes, it Anything is. Anything yes. else? No. Chief? I'm sorry. Chief? No. Thank you. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. The, the, the only thing I have is I, I come before you guys a little back asking them to put on four See. or five times. Oh. I've completed the process, um, and I'd like to squeak one more in there. I have very, very good qualified. And I just recently found out that I have a potential to lose another part timer who may be taking a full time job anywhere in January. So I'd, I'd like to come before you with five instead of four. And on Tuesday or tonight? I was planning, no, no, not today. I was planning on the next meeting, which was Tuesday. Okay. But I didn't want to be surprised if I told you I was going to come with four and I showed up with five. Like Clarence, and I don't know, Linda, if you've had this discussion with the chief, but when, when people hear that we're putting on people, and this is the same thing with her putting on another mm -hmm. operator. You know, we only have so many shifts that those people can yeah. fill. We only have mm -hmm. so many trucks that yeah. Herb can put somebody in. These are just people that they have the ability to take from yes. if somebody else isn't well, there. Yeah. It doesn't I cost understand. the town any money. In fact, that. it saves the town money because if, if I don't have enough time to fill the shifts, 
the full time is still on overtime, so mm -hmm. it actually saves a ton of money. So yeah. I, well, I, I understand. I don't that. have an objection. With I that. don't have a problem with that either. I didn't think you would. I just wanted to run it by you. Okay. That was it. Well, other than the other agenda on that. Don. It's just a quick question in reference to Peter's um, uh, question about uh, capital improvements. The capital improvement planning committee was disbanded. Is that correct? Not so much disbanded, but the, this gets assimilated. This, this, assimilated this, in. This with disappeared. No, it wasn't. This goes into bylaws. Somebody decided that they wanted a capital improvement committee. To be existing, and we have a bylaw that has to be existing. Right. Yeah. I fought for two years, and yeah. Kermit and I and a couple other people have put together a bylaw that got shot down twice that would meld the um, capital improvement and the finance committee, and it just and do the same job which they're kind of doing right now, but it just mm -hmm. it went away. They had no volunteers. For it. Well, that was my question because I know that it is a bylaw requirement. We we don't have one. It was just. I was thinking that it all got assimilated in with the uh, advisory committee. No, the, the yeah. hope is that the advisory committee is looking at it, which I think a couple are, uh, but I think the majority have probably just lost sight of it. Okay, thank you. Her? On the uh, wages and stuff out there, has the advisory board been working on that? About being... I don't know the answer to that. Have they been told to work on that? I know we had a discussion. Who did we ask? I think they were... We had asked them to look at it through discussion based on next um, next budget, town meeting. Next budget. Budget time, right. Yeah. I'm my, just wondering. my assumption is that they haven't looked into it yet. Okay. That would be my assumption. But I know we had the conversation in this room to mm -hmm. uh, for them to, yeah, to go out and look. A couple of them had the attitude that it's not on the town of Brookfield to look at other towns. And compete. No, I'm just talking about being fair across the board also in the town of Brookfield. Yeah. Right. Like I said before, you're paying some people around here, you're paying them real good money for sitting there really doing nothing. And we got to pay guys that are, have to have all their licenses and physicals and so on and so forth, peanuts. This is the same discussion we had. That's what I'm getting what at. I'm yes. to, uh, well, Linda, that's that? what the personnel board is looking at. Yeah, we're yeah, looking. So yeah, the personnel board. We're personnel looking. Board. We're looking into those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're, we're looking. Yeah, we've been working because what we've been doing with a lot of them, we've been going through. It's like the point, the point system to see where they fall in the stepping grade. And um, I missed this week's meeting that you had last week. But wasn't there something that we are? I saw in the notes that we are looking at a new stepping grade. Yes. Yes. I haven't seen it, but we're looking at a new step in grade. Right. We, I, I don't know who I forward the information over to, but I was going to look into that. I was charged with simplifying that, but then you guys revamped. Yeah. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. trying to revamp. We it. just we want to reduce it considerably. Yeah. Oh yes, we do. We do too. We're, I, we're, I don't know who yeah. I gave the information to. Our first step is job yeah. descriptions. Yeah. Once everybody has a job description, then we can move to the the step in grade. Step in grade. Um, but yeah, we're. We're trying. We're trying. And, then and we're we've been, Mary Lou's been really good about that. Like I said, don't lose sight of the fact that we've already implemented pretty much all of the job descriptions, so take a look yeah. at those. Oh, yeah, we know. We're going by a couple minute page, and then we ask the um, department heads, you know, kind of where they fall in with that, and if there's anything this different. This is like deja vu. We did the same Steve, thing. Steve, so we're are your job descriptions on. listed on your computer so Karen can hand them to us? They should be, yeah. Okay. Well, now, we, we've. We haven't had those. So I, I, if they are I think we did it with I think we did it with Jen, so I don't know that would the be, transition of computer systems or that would be great systems. if we could have a copy of those. Re reach out to Karen. It must be someplace then. Yeah, right. because she was uh, uh, yeah, yeah, when Jen was here when we did it. Now what? Cindy, could I just ask it's different. We're meeting on Monday, right? Personal board? Correct. With yeah. the water the water superintendent. And that's at what, nine thirty? Yes. Okay. Thank Any, you. Um, What's happening with Lakeside? The money's approved from the town. Oh, I actually wanted to get, stay on to that, this topic, if you can remember the, the second topic in a second. Because I, I don't want to leave the personnel thing for a moment. Go for it. If you don't mind. Go for it. Earlier, Bruce brought up the idea of bylaw policies and, and job descriptions and the like. I think the other piece of job descriptions goes, and again, it, for today, it's assimilating and accumulating the job descriptions to make sure that they're all in place. But I think the, 
the larger issue really comes once those are in place is to in fact do an audit of those job descriptions to make sure that the, the, the requirements of the job and what people are doing match. So you, when you do an audit, you have to have somebody come in and do that. No, you don't. No, it's just a well, word. That's, a word for it. Yeah. Well, a lot of, well, I know a lot of communities have. They have had people come in to well, do these job don't, audits. Don't, well, well, don't. Yeah, I, I don't see I don't, it as a financial no, issue. I, I no, see it as a managerial issue. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as the department has should be doing that. reviewing the job descriptions, but for example, we had Brenda come and do the library ones. Yeah. She's going down through them and yes. making sure that they match yes. exactly. what yes, everybody's they are. doing. So because we're doing it with every department head mm -hmm. and the selectmen will have their turn, mm -hmm. um, we're asking people, does this job description describe what Absolutely. you do? Yes, that's so what we're, we're doing. So we're doing that in... So I don't feel that we really need an audit done because well, we're doing I that. I come from a world that <laughs> what you're doing is an audit. <laughs> and so that's the word I'm using. And, it, and I'm not talking about paying it's anybody any money. Are we analyze. It, it analyze, audit, whatever. But are we accomplished by, by what we're doing? Are we accomplishing what you're suggesting? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because, because if there's a hole, let's fill it. Okay. And that's, that, these things were put together saying these are the job descriptions, these are the tasks that are to be done. If we are not doing it, we're, we are creating a hole. We need to fill that hole. So and, and by going through each one of them, we are updating yeah, or changing. Doing. Right. But I think to, to Herb's point, back to job descriptions and salaries and those kinds of things are built on a job description. If someone's not doing a task and they're being paid essentially for that task, it gets back to the fairness issue and how to approach the fairness issue. So it's very important and prudent to do the anal analyzing that you're doing. We had that discussion two years ago as well. Yep. All right, so I'll ask Karen for the existing ones yeah. so that we can compare Copeland and Page's template. Well, I know Karen with has the oh. existing and with the department heads' input. So we're really looking at three that way. I think a lot of the job descriptions that are in the in the binder that she has in there, they're old job descriptions. Yeah, my job description was yeah, not they even are, close they're old. to so what this I is, do. This is why we've the been going through them and analyzing them was. and you know, seeing just what the people do. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. If, there, if there are things that we need to cover, then we need to cover yeah, them well, too. We're going through yeah. them yeah. very closely. All right, are we good? Yep. Any other department head? Lakeside? <laughs> good job. <laughs> well, this, is, this is on the other, if you want to take it up now, Connor. Sure. We were notified yesterday via email that we're receiving a package that says that the state has voted our project to be one of the few that will go forward for next year. Okay, the reason I'm asking is Herb presented me with his uh, project list for next summer, which means oh, yes. paving Pine Lane, and I have a project I have to do on Pine Lane that has to be done before his project is done, and it's going to it's it's going to mean closing traffic. So I'm trying to plan. What are we going to do with the traffic? It I boils hope, down. I hope you're not proposing going through the property. Oh, no, I'm going to have them levitate over the work that we plan to do in the middle of the road. Put it this way if, if we don't do something to get them in and out, they'd have to get out by 6 o'clock in the morning and probably won't be able to get back until 6 o'clock at night. I'm just, I'll, I'll so be on record so. right now where we're not directing traffic through that campground. No. no. Well, and, and what we need to do is we need to get the survey done first. So is it in, imperative that this be done at a certain time? Your work or my work? Your work. Uh, can it wait a year? Well, well, yeah, you can work it. No, no, I know, I know we didn't go on, Clarence. Um, I, I, again, I, we haven't it, even gone on. It can up all to, wait a year, but I'm going to tell you my truthful hmm? opinion. There's no direct route through Lakeside now. We know that from walking it and cleaning it. There, there is. There's a, road, there's a nice road going in from both streets, Hobbs Abbey and Pine Lane. They don't connect in the middle. Okay. And that is the issue. If they were to connect in the middle, I would say, what's the harm in allowing um, uh, emergency traffic through there for that one day? I mean, we both know it's been driven over more times than any other spot in the town of Brookfield. But, but, that, but I think, that connection isn't there at the moment. Yeah, but, but in fairness to the chairman, 
I mean, we need, we need the information that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And so I think that given the information, we can make a better decision. And that's why I'm saying I'm not sure how quickly we can get this certain. Again, the grant has not been formally awarded us. They've said, yes, submit your, we will be asking you for additional details to then approve the, that activity. But I mean, I don't know how fast I, we can do that. I still would like to see the town of Brookfield, the selectman's office, take control of the situation for a potential. There's a potential there for a situation that the residents will not be able to leave their properties or get to their properties. We have land that will allow this to happen. I think we should at least investigate how we could do this. If that, well, if Clark, that situation Clark's, Clark's is saying we, we, are, we are investigating it, but it mm -hmm. might take a year. I, I would say the project can't wait if Herb wants to pay. Unacceptable to me. It's To yeah. me, it's not. It, yeah. they, they know they live on a dead-end, narrow street. If work has to get done, to me, it's, it has it's to get done. If they have no way to get into that, or out of that residence for, for almost a 12-hour period, I don't, I don't yeah. think that's... Then the project should be all. designed a, a better way of... I You're right. Know. You're right. I, the know. Lakes, I haven't the, seen it. The Lakeside project should be designed to allow egress under a, I don't want to say an emergency situation, but under a control situation. And all I'm saying is I have, I have to have time to figure yeah. out what's there. And right now, it's it's you don't have the permission to go through that property. Right. Right. Do what we have to do, that's all. Right, I'm just, thinking, I'm just like, you Is know, putting it off paving a year, yeah. is that going to be an issue? It, we can put off anything. Yeah. But I still think the plan of action should be here in case something so happens. So let's, let's, let's say we can't use Lakeside after the determination's been made. Yeah. What do we do now? That's a tough I think we cut the townspeople's throat is what we did. Because we had the ability. Yeah. I don't know. Because we own the property. We still own the property. That's right. But through discussion, mm -hmm. to me, that's just not a good argument. Well, wait, what if you had, say, some kind of an access way back on, you know when you first come in on Hobbs Avenue? Mm -hmm. And where they had a lot of um, the permanent little mobile homes way up there on the right. Isn't there some way that we could have some kind of an access there? Well, I, I'm saying I think we should look at it. Not even way back on the prop? No, no, no. Again. Well, uh, it, we don't, it's, all, it's all going to make time, so let's not yeah. beat this up yeah. anymore. Yeah. Okay. Any other department had issue? I do. You do? Yes. Go. So on, um, what was it, December 1st, there was a FEMA meeting or... Uh, Discovery meeting is what, what it was called in Southbridge. Did were you able to go or I was not able to go. This oh, is uh, oh, yes. Quinnebog. Um, yes. Yes, Quinnebog. Right. So I, what what they did is they sent us a, a survey that they they believed to be correct, and I looked at it. I think it is correct. What I would like to do is throw one more to Cindy that she respond to this that the document is in fact correct and that Cindy. Bruce and I quickly looked at it this morning. Yeah. yeah. And it's not correct. Then would you tell them that it's not correct? That the, the data sheet seemed correct. Did, if the yes, the did data sheet seems correct, correct yeah. but the map. Yeah, Karen sent this yesterday. Quinnebog yes. watershed, uh, uh, Brookfield is in the Chicopee watershed. Quinnebog is. We are in both, is what this thing is telling us. Okay, I haven't looked at it then. All right, so. To, not to belabor this meeting. What I'd like to do is toss it to Cindy for one more thing that she needs to do. And to, if she has, yeah, so if she's got issues, again, the, the data sheet seemed right. Yeah. If the map's wrong, to Don's point, because again, I'm not privy to understanding how that map ought to go, but that we in fact communicate with them, one, our interest to participate, to make sure we don't lose out on grant monies and all those other things. But, but again, I think it's just to participate. I didn't read their 46-page presentation yet this morning. Okay. Um, <laughs> but Bruce and I questioned the same thing because we thought we were in just the Chicopee watershed. No, you're in both. We're in both. So what, what it is is they're missing some bodies of water. So I guess we need to then update their map. Yep. So, could you do that? Sure, we'd be happy to take on another project. Another project, that's what I was going to say. Thank you. Anything, Thank you anything else? <laughs> nope, that was it. All right. Um, I guess yes, I know I had to step out for a minute here for uh, grid and stuff. Is anything being done about trees? Yeah, yeah. We, well, yeah we already did. We're so quick. That. You handed me the list and I'm quick. <laughs> we did it. Just like well, that. Can you 
Just give me a quick update of what's going on with the trees and can what's going to happen. Can she do that after the meeting? And I have a phone call to make and get yeah. back to her, so. Yeah. Because the, the reason I'm asking this is if it ends up back for me to take care of stuff and everything else, who's going to be taking care of the bills? Because if I hire somebody, I'm the one that should be taking care of the That's bills. That's what the phone call is going to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and quick, okay. quickly, it looks like it's coming back to you. Just, and it's not coming back to you. I think we've always had the discussion yeah. that it was a working yeah. uh, teamwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the equipment. Those and the other reason that I'm asking this because there's been a bunch of trees that have been cut down in the town of Brookfield that are hats of trees. Yeah. As but far there's as a pile of mess with, left there. With, with one phone call, you can start today. So after this, that'll be my first phone call. Because, you know, uh, Lewis Tree's been cutting a bunch of big trees down and stuff, and everything's been left. Is that through National Grid? I do not know. Because I know they did it with an individual, and the tree warden actually went out with his own chipper and shift it up to them. National Grid said they're not going to check yeah. it up. So they're just this is responsible for dropping okay. it down. Well, let, let me know what's going on. Yeah. I didn't ask that question. That, that, that's just from history of that gentleman, because he was upset. They, were, they dropped his pine branches. It was horrible. Yep. And, uh, he couldn't get mm, I know who the person was. He couldn't get National mm. Grid to chop it, and he went out and chipped it up himself. Yeah. Uh, item number six, is this Kermit or is this the chief for computers? Both. Let's do this. Gentlemen, welcome. <coughs> what news do you have for us, gentlemen? Well, I'm Stephen, oh, I want to say Tyler was not Stephen Taylor. Um, he, he since retired from IT work, and he came in and he looked at the computers and he recommended that they did be replaced. He said the hardware in them is, I believe, six or seven years old. I think the dates he found in them were 2009 from the hardware. Um, so he said that they would, he would recommend replacing the computers. All right. So to uh, kill conversation and time, I'm. That's all we needed. That's right. Yep, that's right. So I don't think you need a motion for that, do you? It's not over. But was it? Do we want? Was it dollar amount that we set? Let's let's do it if we. I mean, so I'll entertain a motion to allow the uh, police building committee to purchase new computers for the new police station. I will make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 With this discussion as well, if we're buying new computers, can we put it in the budget? to get a new vacuum cleaner over there for the... Uh... We have, actually at the last meeting, um, actually at the advice of uh, Chief Martel, we have a little bit of money set aside, um, I think not even more than two grand, to just purchase stuff like that. To like, stock to Once we go through, to, to purchase mop you know, buckets, mops buckets, okay. uh, trash barrels, vacuum cleaners, yeah. and, and anything that's... Well, he's, he, he has a dancing partner every time he goes over. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's a little ridiculous. It is. It is. It's tough, you know. Um, and that's, so that's I, I walked that absolute, I don't know if you guys have done it, but it's one of the most enjoyable things you'll ever do, just walking around by yourself. I walked it yesterday. Unbelievable building. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. I had a lot. I like to go. And, and what, what struck me when I walked out the door, uh, Mr. Fisk, who was doing the finished carpentry, just looked at me and said, you know, Brookfield has something to be proud of. Yeah, yeah, and that, that made me feel 20 feet tall. And it's, it's getting close. Yeah. Um, and, and we anticipate moving in in the beginning of January. And we will have an open house on, on the weekend day. And we will uh, invite the public in. We'll give them tours. And, and it'll a, be good. But they absolutely abs have absolute yes. beautiful facility. a very functional and very yeah. aesthetically pleasing building. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. On time and ahead of budget. Yeah. So it might, might be appropriate to give you an update on the budget. Our, our budget reserve right now is about $35,000. We anticipate that in some of that budget we won't spend some of the money. So we may have as much as an additional $20,000 in reserves. We have a wish list. 
some of the things that we took out early on when we weren't sure of what was going to happen. So we took out some of the things that we uh, absolutely didn't need. The chief didn't absolutely didn't need. Would love to have. Well, I, I wouldn't say absolutely didn't, didn't need. need. I don't like that terminology. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe didn't need. Less of a need, perhaps. <laughs> but uh, but even if we added all those back in, we still would. Even if we added everything back in that we kind of pulled out, we should have uh, ample reserves still left. So that would include even a carport. We could put a carport back. So that means we could get a good raise out of that then if you turn the money back in. <laughs> well, you know. Well, you can't. And I, I, to be honest, I, I just had to bring it up. <laughs> to, to, I, to be honest with you, the, the layout and all of that, I don't know what's going with a carport right now. So I think that'll have to be a, another oh, day. No, oh, yeah. No. Yeah, we're, 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 we're far from making Because that, that garage is beautiful. Yeah. A, a black ceiling, it's like, wow, that's yeah. something you don't see. It's, it's a beautiful, oh, it's everything, just absolutely beautiful. Thank you again. Well, one more yeah. topic before I lose it. I asked the board at the previous meeting about considering lighting yep. there, especially the street light style of lighting. Uh, you would say you want to see just what it looks like once it was placed at power, which your family does. If you go by there every night, you'll see what the normal lighting scheme would be. The building itself isn't bad. The chief may want to weigh in on, on his, if he has any concerns. But Primary Street itself is still rather dark. The thought was, we set, we pay a set amount to National Grid for all the street lights we have. Do we have any street lights? Do we have any extra that we're not utilizing? Of course, if we're spending money for X, are there one or two that we don't have in place that got cut over the years? and we just never put them back because, especially if we're doing anything with the RTA or the, the, the police station itself, one or two street lights on that street would make a great difference. Yeah. So I'll, we'd have Karen reach out for that yeah, question. If, if we're paying for, let's say, 200 street lights, but this yeah, one, I, I understand. Some, something. Well, that, that brings up Project well, Street well, also. Well, and while the Chief's up here, um, Herb had a recommendation, or Cindy and Herb had a recommendation as to stop signs on Prouty Street, and that uh, that recommendation was given the chief. And there's not a stop sign on Prouty Street. Well, there's, there's two. Yeah, there's two. They and they don't work. So we, this was an idea of something to catch people's attention, so that we don't have 20-ton uh, trucks running over somebody. So what's the suggestion? Well. They use them a lot down south now and stuff. They're uh, actually LED stop signs. They flash around the outside edge all the time. Oak, Oak Camp has one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it catches your eye when you're driving down the road. I know it caught mine when I'm driving down south earlier this year and stuff. And I said, what the heck's that way up in the distance? And the closer I got, and I realized what it was, and I could see it. But it catches your eye and stuff. I, I know what you're referring to. You, that's kind of a an extreme, isn't it? Uh, it's it's. It, I don't. I don't think it is. I, it's a very dangerous intersection. Like, we've had, every we've accident had that's come, quite a few it, it's been the fault of the driver yep. going on Crowder yep. Street. It, well, they just have no idea they're supposed to stop. Mm -hmm. So I, I would I would recommend going with that. And I would also and, and Herb and I had talked this about this a while ago. I don't know if he remembers, mm -hmm. but I would like to see it painted on the ground. Stop too. You know. Um, so what's what's the logistics of it have to be powered? <coughs> solar. It's, it's all solar. This is all solar stop signs. Yeah, 1200 bucks I mean, a piece. But yeah. 1200 bucks. We don't need we don't need one down on Mill Street side. I mean on down uh, Central Street. On Central Street, just one on Route 9. No, the, the, the problem is is when they're they're on Private Street and they're crossing Route 9. Both a lot of them yeah. have no idea that they're supposed to stop. You're talking on the other side, the 148 side? The, the majority of the accidents have been caused by the operator coming, coming south on Prouty and crossing Route 9 headed towards Central Street. Yeah. But it's not to say that it's it's not going to happen on the other side. So whatever we do to one side, I would like to see done on the yeah. other side. Both on Prouty yeah. Street. Yes. Yes. Uh, and where's the, money, where's the money coming for that? Tom, it's a suggestion that we're putting out there to the board and everything else. And, you know, maybe there's some money out there with you know, Grant, Jepson Fund, something like that, I do not know. Can well, I think the idea that first was to go to have the chief approach DOT 
I don't think DOT is going to, I haven't approached them, but okay. I will, but I don't think they were because we had, a, I had contacted them before and all they would take care of is I think anything on Route 9. I don't know. Well, I know Rudy, Rudy, Rudy had brought to our attention um, a study, the majority of accidents over by the 148 Route 9 area. So you might want to reach out to DOT because it is on their radar that that's a bad intersection. So they might be willing to not only place it, but also to fund it. So it can't hurt for asking. Yeah, that's where I will. To I'll, start. I'll give them a call. Uh, and then go from there, and then just report what you have to us on Monday. Maybe have Cindy look into funding. And get we, back. we can look and see where we can find some money. So. And get back to us on Tuesday. If, if all of grants and all of fields should it come out of the police station funds? I don't think no, you can justify that. Well. that uh, not associated with the police station. Yeah. Uh, it, that's always part. That's, that's going to be a very okay. Just a, yeah, just I, a question. I, I personally Stretch. wouldn't approve it, I, but I know from day one when it was even talked about purchasing Prouty Street that that was a very bad yeah. intersection. You know, um, I I can always use some money out of my road reconstruction to do do something like that. But I think it state might. Actually, buck up for I'll give them a call. I, I, I don't think they will because I know I had this conversation with them before. Yeah. But with that, I'll try to get signed. Uh, no, it wasn't. I, this is no. This because, is the first time that this has been brought up. I'm going to tell you just just the history of the state for them to go into Charlton, Oxford, and start what they started on that quick of a notice. <coughs> I think they uh, they take safety to the. Uh, they do, but I mean they've had plans in place for that. that but that's not, bumped it up. No, hmm. they they pulled the plug on that project. And it just after that accident, it's that I can't believe it happened like that. No, I, I, I will definitely I will call them and see what they say. Yeah. Anything else? I don't want to. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. All right, thank you. Guys. Could I say one thing before they leave and like. before Herb leaves? Bruce, Bruce, look at the court. I'd like to give uh, you know let Bruce and Herb know what a great job they've done out here. You know. Oh, um, you know, with all the landscaping, the grass looks nice, it's up, and then too, from opening everything all up, you go by Route 9 at night and you can see the town hall looks so nice, you know, it, we have a nice view because it's such a nice building, and you know, I'd just like to compliment them on all the work that they've done. Since you just brought up the town hall in the back area, yep. you know, I know we got one street light out there, yep. hopefully where I cut down the, the, yep. the brush and stuff around that, that'll yep. help out. Yeah, bit, it does. So. It just looks so nice when yeah. you go by on Route 9. I've had people compliment yeah. the town, and uh, I just wanted to pass that along, and I'll it's, see Bruce also. In it's cleaned up. It don't look like a, a mess. No, it looks nice. Very yeah, nice out there now. Thank you. Same with Mill Pond. Did you want that? That yeah. was great, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, just gonna get the barrels out of there. One Mill Street, day. Mill Street, can you remember what that used to look like? Mill Street's very, oh, Mill Street, too, has done a great job down there. It's cool. All right, item number eight, wage authorization signed off by Supervisor and Personnel Board for... Uh, that's, um, that's for Board of Register. I yeah. look it over. Yeah. It's I'll fine. entertain a motion to approve the wage authorization from Ms. Flynn as a registrar. I will make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Any none all favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Under other... Um, I will have to sign yeah. it. <clears throat> this goes back into as well. Uh, Ms. Grimaldi from Tantasqua is asking when the deadline for articles must be submitted. We have not discussed that yet. Um, maybe well, to, well, we're talking yeah. the 1st of June. <coughs> for town well, the town meeting, but then we want to backtrack off of that, so we might want to have... Yeah. Getting back to the same Yeah, but 1st of June, we don't about. usually... Have the town meeting maybe the second week? You talk about the first uh, week? When I say first, whether it's yeah. first week or second yeah. week of June. Uh, to be yeah. honest with you, I'd still love to have a town meeting when the bylaw says we have to have the. Uh, I would too, but. But you can't. Yeah, you can. You can do whatever you want. Oh, I know we can. Oh, yes, I realize. <laughs> we know more of the figures. But, but we the know figure, more figures we, what they are. But to be honest with you, we, we don't even know the figures until after yeah. the recess. Yeah. So and that's in July. Yeah. So, you know, we, we don't even know the numbers by the time we have mm -hmm. the meeting. So that's kind of fallen deaf to me. Yeah. 
So we'll just keep in the back of your mind, there so, are, that's the second request yeah. we heard from today. So, but, but getting back to that, then it really time wants to be this timing, and you'll have the conversation with the advisory board. But well, it really we'll share. Gets, yeah, and I yeah. don't think I'm going to get anywhere that far. Oh, I understand. Yeah. But 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 at the same time, it gets back to more an Aprilish time frame to have yeah. all of this stuff known. All right. Um, entertain a motion to allow the Worcester County Bassers for August 20th use of Quaybog Pond for 14 vehicles from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? There are none all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion to allow the Greater Low Bass Fishers the use of Quaybog Pond on Saturday, June 4th, uh, 10 vehicles, 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. Are you not all in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we've signed more than normal this year. That's, <laughs> That's why well, the somebody ought to be paying came, for the port apply there early. Yeah. Uh, correspondence. Um, did the chief leave? He did leave. Mm -hmm. um, we received correspondence through DCR that uh, the fire department was awarded $1,493. Uh, grant through the United States Department of Agricultural Forest Service. I, my only question was what we could use it for, but he is he's the one that provided this yeah. to us, so he is aware of it. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, this is a press release in regards to the non-closure of the barracks, and that's it. Anybody else have any other issues before the board? No, Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. No, I'll second it. Anybody want to discuss? Hearing none, all in no. favor? Let's Aye. go home. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.